Hi everyone, so yeah, as, as they said, I'm Greg. Um, I'm gonna try and set the bar really low for this in case you don't like this talk. Um, if you get nothing else out of it, if you can last to the very end, I do have not one, but two free stickers. So just keep that in mind, nothing else. Right, so making vulnerability management suck less. Uh, I was supposed to present with uh, Jay Paz, but he had a family emergency come up yesterday. He sent me an email last night saying, hey, I have to go to Denver, so uh, good luck. And so here I am by myself. Um, I am a senior security engineer at Pearson, where my role is primarily focused on automating all things security. Pearson is a huge company, um, 30,000 employee plus, and there is five of us on the AppSec team. So if it doesn't scale, we are not interested. Um, I'm the creator of Defect Dojo. Uh, I also did a presentation at, at DEF CON 22 on compromising continuous integration tools, if anyone cares. Um, I also got to do the, the Hack the Pentagon program a couple months ago, which I'm, I'm not a big fan of bug bounty programs, but um, those guys are really awesome. They let us do whatever we want, and the, the, uh, the checks were fat for the findings, so if you get the opportunity, it's one of the few ones that I like. Um, I'm also the, the San Antonio uh, OWASP chapter leader, or one of them, and so if y'all have anything that you'd like to talk about, we really, really need presenters, like really, really, like I'll beg you. Um, so if there is anything you wanna talk about in kind of a, a close, communicative sort of setting, great, great spot, please talk to me after. So this is Jay, who's uh, in Denver, thanks Jay. Um, he's a manager of penetration testing at Rapid7, and uh, probably has done more work on Defect Dojo than anyone else. Jay and I are kind of like Curious George and the man in the yellow hat because there's all these awesome things that I want to do in the, the project. I, I get like a wild hair and I start on them. And then what ends up happening is Jay, uh, Jay cleans up my mess. Uh, this is also a project that's fairly well developed at this point. Uh, it turned three in July. So this isn't one of these presentations where I'm gonna be up here and be like, man guys, wouldn't it be great if y'all did all this work for me? Um, it's totally done. It's in production usage by two handfuls of companies, give or take. And so kind of where we are now in terms of product maturity is we have uh, continuous integration functional tests. So every piece of code that goes out is um, reviewed and checked to try and make sure we're not introducing bugs. Now, it's not perfect, but it's decent. We also scan every release with um, Zap Proxy making sure that we're not introducing new security issues, although uh, because it's Python Django, it's, it's fairly hard to screw up. Um, I worked in cloud for a long time as well, and one thing that really annoyed me about developers in cloud specifically is that they ran at a million miles an hour. Nothing was ever documented. If it was documented, it was wrong. Um, and so we try to document every single aspect of Defect Dojo, so if you have a question, there is a guide because that really became one of my pet peeves with projects. Uh, we also have Docker support. So if you're into that, you like Docker, it's there. Honestly, I'm not that into Docker at this point, probably because I'm dumb, but you know. Um, we're also in the project of being in the process of being recognized as a medium level project in OWASP, which um, hopefully someday we'll get to flagship. But we do have a bunch of different contributors from uh, a bunch of different companies. Myself at Pearson, uh, Charles Neal in the front row, in this Hawaiian shirt, has suffered through a lot of this with me at Rackspace. Um, Jay's at Rapid7 now, Aaron Weaver at Cengage, and uh, Matt Tesoro owes me some code too. I see you, Matt. I'm gonna hold you to it. Um, but yeah, so that's where we are right now and today. Um, I, I really don't like new tools when someone comes and tells me there's something that I have to go try. Usually it doesn't work. Um, or there, there's some other sort of problem with its adaptation. And so for me to suggest a new tool, it has to do something that no other tool is doing. It has to be extremely easy to set up and uh, it has to have good documentation. And so why we, we kind of started down this process is um, it first it's created by security people for security people. And we really try to streamline um, kind of AppSec programs and, and testing processes because I felt as a tester, I was spending 60% of my time reporting and maybe 35% of my time testing. 
and yeah, so the end goal again is to allow the testers to do what they really want to do, which is hack on uh, products rather than spend time filling out X report or providing X metrics in a spreadsheet. Again, well documented. I don't know why I put this in there so much. It, it does. Actually, we, the, the funny thing is, is we actually have two sets of documentation. So we have read the docs, and then we have another format, just because why not, you know? Uh, standalone versus Dockerization. Again, um, Aaron Weaver has done some great stuff with Docker. We also have a, a standalone one-line install that works on everything from Ubuntu, Mac OS, RHEL, uh, both Debian and um, Yum-based systems. And so a little history on how this project actually got started is um, vulnerability management for me started in Dratus 2.0, which uh, I, I know no one likes to put their hands up, but Dratus 2.0, folks? Oh, come on, there's more than that. But anyways, yeah, so that was um, my introduction to vulnerability management. And it does what's advertised, but it doesn't scale. Um, oh, man, that's kind of hard to see up there. Oh, well, but um, if you've seen it, you know it. And so at the time, I was at Rackspace, and we realized we wanted to go to something else. So we tried pretty much every commercial product on the planet. I'm talking we went 10 pages deep in Google search. Um, and kind of what I concluded is that I hated all of them. Um, and at the time, I was still uh, kind of young and gunning, and I said things that I shouldn't. And so I told my boss, I was like, hey, I think I can do this better and we should give it a go. And so, um, stupidly enough, he gave me, he said, yeah, sure, Greg, you know what? You go for it, let's see what you can do. And so, he was like, you can do this in two weeks, right? I was like, oh yeah, totally. So, um, I went and tried to make a new vulnerability management tool in two weeks. And we got kind of this uh, Frankenstein form beast thing that um, my director looked at and he actually said, well, this actually isn't as bad as all the other things we were using, even in this state. So, let's see where we can take it. Um, so, at that point, Charles got sucked into the project. Charles, say hi. Yeah. Charles, now yeah. I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why the Hawaiian shirt started, is it was just really, really miserable. And so, we started wearing Hawaiian shirts and, and timing our laps to work, which was very dangerous. But um, anyway, so we got another two weeks on the project. And so after a total of one month of development time, we actually went into production with this in Rackspace and turned off everything else, um, which was total hell because our VPs were looking at this. The metrics were wrong. They weren't being calculated correctly. So we had a very, very bad time for about, I think it was like six months, give or take. So the, the common themes, though, that we really try to uh, perfect in Defect Dojo and make life easier for folks is... Um, First, templating, which is essentially the ability to not have to write something four times. Um, from a, a manual penetration testing perspective, let's say you're testing an application and you find uh, four instances of cross-site scripting have the same mitigation, same sort of impact. And I found myself in the other tools rewriting that. Defect Dojo is a system that I'll get into and show a full demo. I have a lot of demos. Um, of copying that information over, so you only write it once. Uh, report generation, so basically after you fill all this stuff out, it creates sort of a standardized reports. Everyone's report looks the same. It's very, very pretty. Um, and you get, I'd say, really good branding, but also you're not wasting time writing reports. Metrics that matter, which really means uh, just about every metric under the sun because I'm sure as folks know, when they deal with their senior leadership teams, what they want in one week is usually not the same thing they want the next week. Um, and I've experienced that across the board, everywhere I've been. I've never had a, a senior leadership team that was like, yeah, we're going to do this. And that actually was true, like, in a quarter. Um, so instead, we just tried to come up with literally every metric we could. Scanner consolidation, so the ability to upload scan results from a variety of commercial scanners and then triage those results. Self-service tools, which I kind of think of as uh, babysitting. So essentially, rather than doing like the real menial stuff over and over, you can focus your talent on the, the more difficult tasks. And finally, plugins. So again, um, this is an OWASP project, totally open source, three BSD clause. Um, and it uses Python Django, which has a wide variety of plugins already available that you can install and immediately get working. 
We have some that we've also written ourselves that I'll talk a little bit more about at the end. I'm going to get a drink of water. So this is what Defect Dojo looks like today. If you were to boot up an instance, this is what you'd see as a, an engineer. This is the first thing that you would view in the application. Um, it's called a dashboard. Uh, but so on the left, the, the active engagements, that's essentially where a penetration tester can look at like what they're working on. Uh, to the right, what they've found recently, uh, the types of things they're finding. There's some other graphs down here that aren't that important. And so basically just, just what's going on for them in their week. Um, an important thing to note and kind of understand is we have a couple object types that I'll talk about. And so one is, is products, uh, engagements, findings, endpoints. <coughs> and so kind of a, a real world working example for that is your product type. Forgot that one. Product type would be like your, your tech organization or who owns the application. And then your, your product would be the actual thing that you're testing. An engagement would be some sort of um, activity that you're charged with. It could be a quarterly PCI scan, something where you're going to use multiple tools. Um, your tools are essentially what's defined as a test, uh, tests of findings, and then an endpoint is where it's found. So right now we, we support a, a wide variety of commercial scanners. So obviously you guys can read, but uh, Veracode, Nessus, Zap, Checkmarks. Does anyone here work for Checkmarks? No? Oh, man. So they, they keep changing their output files and just killing me. It, it keeps breaking the uploader. It's driving me up the wall. It's the only one that's doing this. And so I was hoping to shame them, but are they really? Yeah, I'm going to stop by there in a minute. But anyways, um, Arachne, Nexpo, AppSpider, Burp Suite, all supported. And so what that actually means is this is the engagement view. You can click this import scan result. You select some information about the uh, tool that you want to upload from. And so up here it details all the correct files. And then you eventually choose the file. And you wait. And then you can. Um, you can see essentially all the findings that was found by that tool, and then you can triage them, you can mark them as active, you can put them in a report, you can do whatever you want. Uh, Gen 2 of this, again, because at Pearson we have so many employees and so many applications, and we operate actually, I think, in every country in the world but two, um, is that uploading files repeatedly is not really scalable. So Gen 2 is essentially we take the credentials, we take the endpoint of where the tool is, and um, instead, we, we manage it for the user. So you never have to touch that tool again if it's on like a continuous loop of scanning the product or a repository. It just automatically takes that information, puts it in Dojo, and then um, is there for you to review whenever you choose. Uh, so Dojo recently just got a, a deduplication feature. So again, with, with Pearson, we're, we're much more about automation. And so we want to make sure that we're not reporting the same finding over and over again. And so um, how Dojo dedupes findings is it compares the endpoint it was found against, the CWE and title if they're available. And so essentially if the CWE or the title match and it's found in the exact same spot, Dojo goes, oh, I think this is the same thing. And there goes my timer. And um, instead it will consolidate a report at the product level, which will show you all the uh, deduplicated findings, if that makes sense. So if you're using nothing but automated, it's a great feature. Um, it's probably not perfect, and there's probably some caveats, but again, continuous improvement sort of thing. Um, but yeah, so this is the uh, report section here. So you can report on everything from uh, how a product is doing, how a given endpoint is doing, um, uh, or like an individual engagement or a set of tests that your engineer was running. And to really show you quickly what that looks like, this is the final product, which is a lot easier to see. Um, and so you could switch these out with your company logos. All this is, is very interchangeable. And so you, know, you get this kind of finding thing at the top that 
you know, gives you the severity, the description information, all the um, things you're used to seeing in a normal vulnerability report. But you can generate this at any level in Dojo. So if you want all the findings for a given product, you can look that up. If you want to see just what an engineer recently did, you can do that. Um, yep. Metrics. So every metric under the sun, there is some in the dashboard, but there also is a totally separate metrics section where um, you can do life through time metrics that will show you what's the most vulnerable product, who's doing the best, um, commonalities and the vulnerabilities that you're seeing. And so essentially this would just be you know, showing you the graphs and all that sort of stuff. Individual product metrics, so if for some reason you didn't like those, you can pull those on a product basis, but we have a, another separate one directly in the uh, product view if you want to pull product specific information. One thing that's unique about this view is it will tell you um, where your findings are coming from, from a tool basis. So if you're curious how um, Veracode is, is performing compared to check marks, um, that, that's something you can look at at this level. Endpoint analytics. So really what this is good for is sort of threat analysis. So if you wanted to know um, what would be the potential if an attacker compromised a specific box and how they could go about doing that and what they could reach, this is uh, the view that you would use for that. So um, what you could see here is that uh, there's basically just a bunch of endpoints. It tells you how many findings are there. If you click the name and drill down, it tells you uh, all the active findings and what's going on. Again, so uh, plugins. There's a couple plugins that we have written specifically for Defect Dojo. So uh, one is engagement surveys, the ability to uh, survey the devs that you're working with and ask questions about what you're going to be testing. Um, LDAP integration and SAML, if you use that for authentication and you want to tie that into Dojo. Tagging. So if you want to label a product, and for instance, you could put the, the technology stack in there, so that way, if your product is using SSL or OpenSSL and a new vulnerability comes out, you can quickly search Dojo and find which products are affected and uh, take mitigating actions. Self-service tools, so again, kind of babysitting. Right now we only have one of these, but um, essentially how it works is it does a port scan on a given product. And if something new comes open, if uh, you, so you set a baseline, and then um, if a new port is open, what it'll do is email the developers and be like, hey, did you mean to do this, or is something funky going on? And they'll say, yes, this is, uh, this is what we meant to do, and then you'll have a new baseline. Um, and so what we want to do is drive it to, as an essential means to kind of whip the developers in shape, right? Do like little micro checks to make sure that um, they're staying in line with corporate policy and that sort of thing. Team calendar. So if you're a manager and want to look at what your team is working on, there is kind of a full featured calendar that lets you click through, look at the engagements, look at what folks are working on, and um, you know, see what's going on. Ah, threat modeling. So Dojo does not do threat modeling, but it will store images of threat models if you're into that. Um, and so basically it just has a, a field at the engagement level which lets you update those. Um, also if you implement test strategies at your company, which is something some folks do but not all to make sure that you know, the penetration testers are doing a, a consistent sort of uh, scope of testing. There's links available to store that as well. Uh, so the future, so this is kind of again like the the driving force behind what makes Dojo what it is today. And so the, the other things that I'm working on right now, A is Jira integration. This is actually um, in my public personal repository right now because that has been um, a deal breaker for a lot of people in the past. And so uh, the Jira integration is 100% bi-directional. Um, if you close something in Jira, it'll close something in Dojo. If you make a comment in Jira, Jira it'll sh uh, show up in Dojo. And um, right now what I'm working on is just polishing up the robustness of that. So the, the error handling, actually letting you know 
what's wrong as opposed to just throwing a, a 500. We're also working really hard to create single deployment buttons. So right now we have one for Docker's cloud service, but we want to add uh, Heroku and Bitnami and some of the other uh, popular single click deploys that are now available. Um, right now, Dojo uses MySQL as the backend exclusively. And we've done that because we're, we're preloading the queries for metrics. And so what that essentially means is when you start putting in tens of thousands of issues, um, it scales pretty well. And there are, I know a, a couple different companies that have 20,000 plus order of magnitude sort of findings. Um, so we are also beating the crap out of this thing in terms of performance testing. Uh, we also want to add credential management. So we're really trying to move it towards a one-stop shop for all things that the penetration tester wants. So they immediately can move, or more seamlessly move between testing and just throwing findings into this thing and uh, getting back to testing. Um, also, I've um, done work to help folks migrate off of other vulnerability management tools that they're using. And so I'm, I'm in the process of polishing this too and putting it out in the public. But if you want these scripts early, so if you email me and you say like, hey Greg, I'm on this phone management system. Is there some way to, that I could like import my data over? I do have a couple of these done and um, I'm happy to uh, give them out with the caveat that like they're not as fully polished as the rest of the, the project is. Uh, we want to expand our um, continuous testing that we're using. So we do have a decent coverage at this point for all the features, but it's far from perfect. And um, also build out the, the intake abilities in Defect Dojo. So the one thing I think it's really missing right now is the um, ability to go from dev team data to engagement for security team. And so um, one of the plugins that I'm working on right now integrates with Google Forms. And so essentially what you can do is uh, create a Google Form that developers fill out and then that information posts to Dojo and that automatically creates something for the manager to assign. Um, but that's still a work in progress. The other thing is we just want to make it easier for folks to launch overall that aren't quite as technical. Um, there is a couple things that don't get set up straight out of the box when you run the setup script. And one of those is uh, the reports feature. But that is like completely documented. I think it's three lines to get it running with Celery um, in the read the docs documentation. Um, but really what we're hoping to do is gain some contributors to this project. Uh, Python Django, again, makes it extremely easy. And we're kind of at this tipping point where uh, most of our, our issues that are in GitHub are enhancements. And we just simply, we don't have the bandwidth to go run and do them all. Um, although a lot of people have wonderful, wonderful ideas, what we really need is more contributors. And so if you're like, well, Greg, like, I don't know Python. I don't want to do Python. I don't have really interest, any interest in coding Python. Um, I will say that it's extremely easy. So my very first job was to do Python, and I had kind of been like a Java developer in school. Like I'd been trained for Java, but then I got to my first job, and they're like, we want you to do Python. And this was actually Django like 1.0 where I started, started in. It was terrible. Um, but, I, but I figured that out, and really it just boils down to three components if you were willing to like pick it up and give it a try. Um, Models essentially controls all the database information. So you just do some Python object mapping to um, the actual database backend. Views processes the data and templates is essentially what folks see. So if you're brave and willing to give it a stab, all you have to do is edit three things to change any feature or add new features. Um, so what I'm going to do next, guys, is I'm actually going to go to a, a fully bootable instance. I'm going to run this code on a remote AWS server and um, I'm going to click around. So if you have any questions, now would be a good time. These slides be available? Yes. So you are working on um, like adding to Jira back on from the, I, I didn't hear that. I just saw Jira on the screen. Yes, yes. So the, the Jira work is, is almost completely done at this point. It, it's fully functional. Um, and it's in my, my public repository. So my name on GitHub is, is DevGregA. And there's a, a fork there of this repository. And so um, all of it is in there right now. I'm just polishing it. Uh, 
Yes, so um, Dojo does have a, an API that almost totally matches the, um, the functionality that you see in the UI. The one thing that is missing is um, you cannot feed it a report file, but you could create findings, if that makes sense. So you, um, it, you would have to give it JSON instead of, or XML instead of just throwing up the, uh, the vulnerability report. So that is a barrier, and it's something that we're aware of, and we're working to um, enhance the API. But so again, these are the, um, the only, was it three commands, four commands that you need to get Defect Dojo up and running on almost any server. Oops. So we clone it, go into the server, run setup.bash. It's gonna download some stuff. Uh, it's gonna ask you the MySQL user and what database you wanna use. It's gonna run some more stuff. Uh, so after it applies all these migrations to the database based off the models file, it's asking me if I want to um, install the Django auth system. So I'm going to say yes. And I'm just going to make it root root because I'm lazy. Yes, yeah, so if you don't want to use Django's auth, you can use LDAP, you can use SAML. And so once it's done installing, all you have to do is tell it to run the server. And if I could spell that, would be helpful. And that's it. Um, we're done. And so over here, I actually have this server up. So does anyone have any questions, anything they'd want to see? Products, engagements, findings. How do you make it not suck? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's your job, Charles. Go, Charles. <laughs> The customer yeah, report thing? Dojo from a lot of the others. New prop. Um, so again, I'm, I'm looking at the, the product level here. And all I'm doing is scrolling down past the engagements where the, the testers are doing their tests. And I go to this area called scans. And so all I do is I tell it you know, what address does uh, this product live on? How frequently do I want it looked at? who should be a person, who should be the, the person that is um, approving the changes. I'm trying to make that more visible. Uh, protocol, et cetera. And then you cl click create, it queues it up, and it does the, the rest of the magic for you. So you can view details edit, launch scan, etc. Um, yeah, so here's just uh, all the links, um, which include the, the, the GitHub project, the documentation. Uh, we have a, a Python Anywhere demo that's constantly running if you decide you want to take another look. Uh, the Python Anywhere demo is not fully featured because it's free and they give us kind of like a limited shell. Um, but I also have this full demo here, which I have set up for Matt's training, which I'm going to leave live until I forget about it, um, or until I remember to delete it, excuse me. So if you um, are interested in uh, checking out the fully featured one while it's still up, it's, that, it's at this address here, and the administrator password is Matt slash Greg was here. And 
Uh, yeah, guys, so that's pretty much all I have, unless uh, folks have other que questions about the applications, et cetera. Um, I'm going to email them. Uh, you can check back with the site. I'll probably take that one or two to get everything for you. Um, or if you have a business card and you want them immediately, I'll, I'll give you the Google Drive share. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is the project as it is now, you know, in GitHub. Uh, 123 stars, 37 forks. You can check out the issues, et cetera. Um, if you've seen GitHub before, you know what's going on. But Cool. OK, guys. Cool. Yes? Does it have the ability to flag findings as false positives? Yes. So really quickly, I'm going to go into the open findings over here. When you go to edit a finding, at the bottom, there is a false positive flag. And so when you check false positive, um, it essentially takes that finding out of all the metrics. It flags it as inactive. It's not counted towards anything. Um, and that's also the flag that the deduplication options use. So when uh, Dojo decides that uh, something is Oh, I screwed something up. But when it decides that something is um, a duplicate, it, it labels it as such there. So to explain that question, can you flag a false positive on an issue as you're importing the, the findings? Yes, so there is also um, options on the, the mass importer. So at the, at the engagement level, when you go to upload the, uh, the scans, Oops. there is options, like if you want to import all of them as active verified, if you've already triaged them, et cetera. Um, sorry, what was the original question? I got so lost in the of your uploads. Yeah, yeah, so right now we support uh, changing things from active to verified in, in batch uploads. There also is a new feature that just got pushed yesterday which lets you um, update directly from the, the, the upper UI as opposed to right here. Going into the repository directly, um, there's a folder called Dojo. Is that, yeah. is that easier to see? I realize that has been a, a problem. <laughs> um, and so, uh, so under tools, uh, we have folders for all the scanners that we currently support. And so uh, it would be very easy just to copy one of these over and, and change out the internal bits of how it's parsed. But so, um, all it essentially does is it reads in the file and then it uses the Python objects here to convert that into objects the database knows how to understand from that file. But um, I didn't write any of the original ones of these, but I have um, contributed to the scanner codes in use. And so again, all I did is I copied one of them and, and changed out the, uh, a, a couple of the innards, three or four lines, and new scanner. vendor scan files of WebGoat or some other public thing if you want to help give them test data. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the other thing is so um, if you are employing scanners that, that aren't listed here or are one-offs um, and you, you don't want to contribute or you don't know Python or you're busy, whatever, um, if you could at least just send us a, um, a, a sample file to work with, we'll get it prioritized and eventually get it done. We're pretty quick about adding new scanners. We're also very quick about um, fixing issues. So if it's an actual bug, if it's impacting um, actually using the tool, I mean, our, our, I don't think we've had a bug go over two days that hasn't been fixed with an average time of like four hours since. Um, this is a big component of how Pearson's doing all their automation. So I work on fixing this full time. Yes? Is there a way to map uh, inputs to a 
Yes. Yes. So, um, in terms of the the triage, like how things go, products have findings, and then findings have an endpoint. And so, when we look at the um, the main menu here, if we select all endpoints, and we uh, we can see the endpoint that is associated with a given product, and then you can drill into it from either way that you choose to. So, you could drill into the uh, finding information. So. If there were active findings for this specific endpoint that we just clicked on, you would see the list of active findings. Uh, otherwise, you can drill down from the product side if you so choose. So how it figures this out is it works from, it works backwards essentially. So it starts at the finding and then it says what test does this belong to and then what engagement does this belong to and then what product does this belong to. So you cannot have a finding that affects multiple products, if that makes sense. You have to ch ultimately choose which product is responsible. So let's say you have a, uh, an application that's doing authentication, and then you have um, another application that's doing something for your client. Ultimately, you have to make a decision about where the vulnerability really lies, if that makes sense. OK, sold. Thank you guys so much for uh, coming and listening to me talk. Um, as always, feedback is, is greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, how we can make the, the presentation easier for folks to understand um, this new tool, you know, what was, what was boring, what was too thorough, what wasn't thorough enough. Um, and again, I have stickers up here if you would like to come take some. Thank you guys so much.